we need to guarantee the safety of the data. That's basically. So we have to bring to Brazil, we have to keep in Brazil all the tools to do that. As you just said, yeah, you're, you're right. Like, it's not that 5G you'll be a fast, uh, you're going to have a fast smartphone internet. This is going to change, it's a, it's a new revolution. Like it's the same revolution that internet brought to the world. It will be on the cars, on the freezers, on our dogs and everywhere. So very, very sensitive. And in case that we detect that if something is going wrong with the information, if something someone is stealing, this is not only up to Huawei, but also to the, all the others, we are going we have to block it and keep the Brazil safe. Eduardo Bolsonaro, so good to have you on American Thought Leaders. My pleasure to be here. Thank you a lot, Sian. So, yeah, and of course we're fist pumping, not because we're so cool, but because, <laughs> you know, coronavirus is here already. We want to kind of do some best practices, let people know yeah, yeah, this yeah. is helpful. So let's talk a little bit about China. You know, at Epic Times, we've done a lot of reporting on China yes. um, and the realities. And of course, Brazil, China is one of the biggest trade partners. Yeah, it's the number one, actually. The number one trade partner. Yeah, not, usually not in our history, in our history, it was always U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, with two exceptions. During the Tories, when we had a president called Vargas, and he was really close of uh, Hitler. So Germany became our first trade partner. And then it's China since 2009, China became our first trade partner. So U.S. nowadays is second one. Okay, no, that's, that's good. That's an education for me here. <laughs> <laughs> And so, but now with speaking of coronavirus, right, yes. why we're fist pumping now, how is this impacting the situation, this trade situation mm -hmm. with China? Yeah, it has potential to do a lot of damage. Uh, I think this is not uh, something new for, for anyone, but we have to see how it's going to happen. You know, you have people telling that it's not that bad because uh, less than 1% of the people uh, die because of that. Other people say that, okay, it's less than 1%, but it has a potential to be all around the world because it's very easy to infect other people, especially because the virus, usually in the beginning, you don't feel the effects of the, of the sickness. So we have to, to look better about what is going on. And when we had the first case confirmed in Brazil, it was the last day of Carnival. That's why people sometimes were talking about why do not cancel Carnival, but we didn't have a, a reason to do that because we didn't have any one case in Brazil, any right. one suspect case in Brazil when it starts Carnival. So that's why. I see. And what about, has there already been any sort of trade or commerce impact that you're aware of? When, when we had the, our first case confirmed in Brazil, I was here in the US and uh, as I know, Everything is pretty normal nowadays. Like, uh, but I'm not the best person to talk about you about what is the government is looking for, what to do if this if coronavirus could start to grow up. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll be watching closely. Yes, know, yes. This but we we had uh, one case uh, confirmed, and we have around uh, 70 others that are under suspect. So they are still analyzing that, and uh, for sure quarantine and uh, maybe looking forward to stop with flights coming from other parts of the world that people are really in fact that this kind of stuff can happen. Well, so, uh, you know, the president announced today that he's actually, you know, barring all travel from Iran because mm -hmm. the virus is spreading in Iran quite quickly right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, to yeah. your point. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it can happen, like, uh, but it doesn't matter what happened, it doesn't matter what is the, the president, if is the one from right or from left, it's almost impossible to break this kind of thing, you know? If, if it has a real potential, if it has, uh, it quickly go around the world, it's not up to a president to stop it. Like, in the world that we live nowadays, like, you have been hundreds, thousands of flights, of everything, people crossing other countries, people, and uh, this is very hard to you avoid that the virus is not coming to your country. Well, no, and this, so this, I, from everything that I've been told, right, we've interviewed actually epidemics journalists on this show. One of the most powerful things can, you can do is basically wash your hands and not yes. shake hands and keep a yes. little distance. Alcohol all the time too. Yeah, 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 yeah it exactly. works. Exactly. 
exactly. Let's talk a little bit more about China and trade. You know, there's been this phase two deal that's been signed here in the U.S. And part of that deal is actually to get China to buy soybeans heavily from the U.S. And I think you're, I think from what I understand, you're, one of your trade associations in Brazil has said that this is going to hurt China, uh, uh, Ven uh, Brazilian exports of soybeans to China. Are you concerned about this? What, what, is, what are your yeah, thoughts? It, yeah. it can happen. It's the free market world. If you have a better price or if you offer something better, you're going to get at that market. So uh, we have to improve our technology, offer lower price, looking for a wide to open other markets around. And sometimes we lose, sometimes we are going to, to win. For example, if you talk about pork meat, we are going to send it all around. Uh, also open new markets are the Saudis now. We are um, selling to them our cow meat. Okay. So things are halal meat, they say. And uh, so this is how, this, this is the world. Like day after day, we have to be, to improve your productions. This is nothing that we are like really concerned about. So this is capitalism in play and you're happy to let it play out. Is that, yes. That's basically what you're saying. Yeah, this okay, is normal. interesting. And if we have the chance, we are going to get the markets from other countries. Yeah. <laughs> we are friends for sure, but uh, money talks. Okay. This kind of issue. All right. No, they're very interesting and thoughtful. So let's talk a little more on the China side. Okay. Something the U.S. is extremely concerned about the encroachment of Huawei into the 5G technology of the future. You know, this technology that's going to control all the communication between machines, the basic infrastructure. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's real concerns. For example, England is thinking about including it. The U.S. is asking, hey, can we co-op? We might not be able to cooperate for intelligence and things like this. Again, how are you thinking about Huawei and Brazil? Because I know there's been interest. Yes, this yeah. is one of the most sensitive issues of, uh, of this year or maybe of this decade. And uh, it's very hard to talk. But uh, what, what we need to do, we need to guarantee the safety of the data. That's basically. So we have to bring to Brazil, we have to keep in Brazil all the tools to do that. What are we doing in Brazil? We are not, uh, there is an organism called GSI, which I can okay. tell you that is the intelligence of the militaries. Sure. Let's go say like this. Sure. They are also taking care about it. So it shows a lot that we are not uh, looking for the 5G issue, about, only about uh, something that is up to the price or up to only technology. This is a state, it's a state issue and we have to take a look really careful about it because as you just said yeah you're, you're right like it's not that 5g you be a fast uh, you are going to have a fast smartphone internet this is going to change it's a, it's a new revolution like it's the same revolution that internet brought to the world it will be on the cars on the freezers on our dogs and uh, everywhere so very very sensitive and in case that we detect that if something is going wrong with the information, if something someone is stealing, this is not only up to Huawei, but also to the, all the others, we are going. We have to block it and keep the Brazil safe. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. Let's go to the theme of this conference now, which is basically America versus socialism. We saw at the Reagan dinner last night. You know, we, uh, basically CPAC Brazil, which I don't know was the was the theme. Brazil versus socialism or something similar. And how how is, there's of course been this resurgence, you're part of this resurgence of conservatism in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, what is the state of things right now? Now we are fighting back against socialism. We had uh, around 30 years of left-wing governments in Brazil, center-left or sometimes as the Workers' Party, extreme left. And what happened in Brazil is that they stole so much money the tax has increased, so people we, people in Brazil they are not happy because usually a worker in Brazil he has to work until June only to pay the taxes, and only after June he work for himself. So people is not okay with that, especially when when you go to the to a hospital or to a school, you don't have a nice infrastructure there. So people in Brazil is realizing that the best thing to do is reduce the size of the state and let the private company create the jobs and bring you other things like education and uh, a big state as we had in Brazil 
it was what led our last our former presidents, as Lula da Silva or as Dilma, to indicate politicians to high chairs inside of public companies. We have a public company called Petrobras. I'll let you give you one example. Okay. Petrobras is our oil public company. So, in Brazil, you only can work, you only can get the oil from the ground using Petrobras. And we have a lot of oil in Brazil. Okay? So, what, what Dilma Rousseff made, she led a party of the Congress to indicate, to name someone to be a director of this company. Okay. For sure, this party voted everything with the former president Dilma Rousseff. Okay. So this is the kind of the deal that they have. I see. But what happened at the end of the day? Petrobras faced billions and billions. We can talk about 20 billion dollars that they stole from this company. And I don't know where it is right now. We are trying to get back all of this money, but you can imagine Incredible. that 20 billion, and I'm talking only about one company. And we have hundreds of public companies in Brazil. Wow. So year after year, we look in this, like, okay, we are fed up and we want something different. That's why when Jair Bolsonaro took office, he named Mr. Paulo Guedes, a Chicago boy, to be the head, to be the minister of the economy. And thanks God, last year we approved the pension reform and Brazil is growing up again. A little bit only, 1%, a little bit more than 1%, but we are not in a recession anymore. And now in Brazil, we are looking forward to approve a tax reform. So this is what is bringing again to Brazil prosperity. It's like free market. And this is not new for anyone. Mm -hmm. If you look on the other countries where you had socialism, as in Venezuela, Cuba, or all the others, look to Argentina now, you are going to see how bad it is for the economy when you talk about socialism. You know, I was interviewing Russ Vogt, who's the acting director of the budget office at the White House this morning. And so, you know, the rule that the president had passed down is saying for any reg new regulation you put on, you have to remove two. Uh -huh. Okay, now what they've done, and this is what Russ told me, was that they've actually removed eight for every one that was added. Wow. So they've really gone further. Do you have any in, in your father's uh, administration, do you have any such rules or any? We have the same yeah. thinking. I only yeah. can tell you it's, it's, it's not like eight for one. Yeah. But the order is like you have to reduce the bureaucracy. And it is for everything. We have a new legislation called uh, Liberty uh, Law, Liberty Act. And this is the kind of legislation that it let especially small producers to create their company. So the president is trying to stimulate small producers to have a company. Because Got in it. Brazil, usually people, when they have the chance, they go to the state and ask for a public job. Okay. For example, I studied law in the university. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the, middle, in the middle of the university, one of the teachers asked the class, how many of you here want to work for the state? And I can tell you easily, I can answer easily, 80% of the class rises up the hands. Really? Yes, because then you have a nice salary, okay. and then you are never fired. Okay. So we have to change this mentality, and this is hard because it take, takes time. Mm -hmm. But when we, when we can do that, things are going to be better for Brazil. Our economy will be, is going to be look much more like U.S. than Venezuela. So we, you know, we have a small business administrator here. Is there a role like that? Like right now, it's Ms. Carranza that, that does that in the white at the White House. What is? Uh, do we have something a role like that in Brazil as well? Like a small what kind business? Of? It's a, someone that focuses on stimulating small business, uh -huh. helping small business flourish. This kind of a yeah, role. Yeah, it's, it's because in, in yeah. Brazil it's crazy because sometimes uh, these people they want to work and the state don't let them work because there's so many bureaucracy, so many things that you have to do, right. so many organizations, so many state, state administration that you have to go and ask for paper and paper right. and paper, that in the end of the day, or they are not going to open their own business, or they are going to open it and be illegal. So it's a very hard situation. This is what we are doing with this Liberty Act. Okay, well, fantastic. It's such a pleasure to speak with you. My pleasure, Jan. And it's very nice that uh, this new kind of shaky hands we have really to uh, tell people what is going on. And uh, as you said, prevent the coronavirus Absolutely. all around the world. Such a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you My very pleasure. much. Thank you.